question we're going to look at is about is is how God uh, unleashes His power on His people, and and that faith connects me to the power of God, and I need the power of God because I don't have resident in me all the strength I need to face what I'm going to face in this fallen world. And here's the structure of the passage. I want you to get this formula. It's an, an impossible obstacle, a call of God, and then divine intervention. There are three examples in the passage of an impossible obstacle, a command of God, and then God's intervention. Let me read 29 through 31. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. First, verse, verse 29, faith connects me to God's redeeming power. If you, if you would read uh, Exodus carefully, uh, God had redeemed Israel out of uh, slavery in Egypt, and they, they were in a straight path to the promised land. Uh, that land that God had promised would be the theirs. The Bible says that God reasoned that these recent slaves were not ready to face the battles that they were going to have to face in the promised land. Because the promised land was filled with nations who wouldn't want the Israelites there. So God turns them and camps them in front of the Red Sea. That obstacle is not in the way of God's plan. That obstacle is God's plan. You don't understand the whole Red Sea account unless you understand God didn't have a broken GPS. He knew exactly where he wanted his people because he wanted them to see two things, his glory and the defeat of the enemy. Because seeing his glory and experiencing the defeat of the enemy would bolster their faith for what they were going to then face as they were in the promised land. How awesome is that? Uh, now, you, you have to understand, there is no way for them. They're in a mess. There's no way you're going to get yourself out of the situation because the army of Egypt is now bearing down on the Israelites. They have an army that's going to slaughter them Again, the most technological army on the face of the earth at this point. This is a ragtag bag of former slaves. They didn't have a chance. And this impassable body of water. And you don't understand the struggle of faith unless you understand that the Israelites weren't happy they were in this moment. In fact, they did what, what people do. They started blame shifting. And they started saying, well, why did we follow Moses? Did you vote for Moses? I didn't vote for Moses. And they actually discussed bagging it and going back to Egypt. Uh, so again, we're not looking at heroic people. We're looking at people like us. God, why would you do this? And the attack on Moses is, did you bring us out here so we'll be just slaughtered in the desert? But all of this is orchestrated by God. Listen, there is not a moment in your life that's not orchestrated by your sovereign God. Did you hear what I said? There are no fate moments. There are no luck moments. There are no, oh, how did I get myself in this situation moments. Every moment in your life is orchestrated by the Lord. Difficulty, the Bible teaches all over the place, is not in the way of God's plan, it's part of God's plan. Because in between the already and the not yet, 
we're not just hanging out till God finally gets around to taking us to glory. We're being transformed. And so uh, there will be obstacles in our way. Obstacles that we can't independently solve. The Red Sea is that. And so God parts the waters. Now imagine wall of water on either side of you and Moses says, okay, let's just start walking in between. I don't know about you, but I'd be saying this is the dumbest plan ever. And seriously, and, but they do it. And I love this. I love the fact that people who had just debated whether they're going back to Egypt actually do the thing that God commands. How patient is the Lord? I mean, think about this. God had every right when they said, we are going to go back to Egypt to say, you're done. You're done. It's over. I mean, he had harnessed the forces of nature and actually control the events of history to redeem these people and how quickly they're ready to go back. But it doesn't do that because this is a God of glorious grace. And he's manufactured the situation so that uh, immediately after Israel is fully across, the army of Egypt is now in the middle of the wall of water and God commands those walls to collapse. And so they can stand on the other side they not only see God's glory in parting the waters, but they see his power to redeem them. I will defeat your enemies. I am the Lord. I will defeat enemies that you have no possibility of defeating. Uh, you and I have no ability to defeat sin on our own. We have no ability to resist temptation on our own. We have no ability to transform our hearts and renew our character alone, none. You have no ability whatsoever to make yourself a better person, none. But God does. And faith, what faith does is it owns weakness. The beginning of faith is not trusting God. The beginning of God, of faith, is dethroning trust in yourself. Because until you dethrone trust in yourself, you will never enthrone God as the power that you depend on. I love this, this second one. This.